My name is Adam Susi. I'm based here in Orlando. Uh, I'm part of the organizing team for both the meetup and for WordCamp Orlando. I've been the speaker, uh, speaker coordinator the last three years, and originally I was going to retire this after last year, but with the cancellation and everything, I can't, I can't go out on a note like that. So uh, I'll stick around for at least one more year. Uh, I'm also a big accessibility advocate, uh, thanks to, again, we'll blame Jeff, uh, a member of the, the WordPress accessibility team as well. And the, along with the focus of this talk, I'm a big mental health advocate. So the most important thing, or there, there are two things, I'll get to the other one later, but the, the first thing that I want you to remember from, to, from today, I'm not giving up today, there's nothing getting in my way. If you knock me over, I will get back up again. It's goofy because it's a line from the Trolls movie in a, uh, a song that's like absurdly happy in a way that's almost frightening and actually articles were written about how it sends a bad message that you always have to be happy. But this attitude in this song, throughout the entire, the entire three minute piece, the character is killed like what or should have been killed at least five times and every time she survives including uh being eaten a few times and that's the true message here is no matter what you go through in life unless it literally kills you you will get back up again it's gonna suck but you will keep going so now we're gonna talk we're gonna have a little story time my story starts in this instance when I was uh, about 15 years old. I was going through just what at the time we thought was typical teenage stuff. Sad a lot, low energy, which was weird because I was, I was a varsity athlete as a freshman in high school on the swim team. I, I was in a state championship winning marching band in a state that it's super competitive where the national championships usually come from. And I had every reason to be happy, and yet things just weren't quite right. And as I went through high school, I struggled. You know, I, you know, I thought some of it. I thought it was relationship problems. You know, I was like, oh, my girlfriend broke up with me. That's why I'm sad. You know, part of that was true, but as it went on, it just things never quite seemed right. Tried uh, going to a therapist a little bit. wasn't I, I don't think I went to a very good therapist. Looking back on it. I also spent a, a good amount of time uh, trying out a few different medications, but this is over 15 years ago. Antipsychotic medications at the time were not very good. They were still, especially for teenagers. Um, teenagers, like that's why you, you always see the, when you hear like the side effects and everything it, where it says like may cause suicidal thoughts and you're like, but it's a medication for depression. That seems kind of counterintuitive. In teenage, teenage uh, brain chemistry is actually very different than adult brain chemistry. So as a result, the intended side effects actually, be, or the intended effects actually become a huge problem. So I, I ended up stopping on those and just kind of got through, th I got through things. Um, had a few scary, scary points, but I, I survived high school, got to college. I ended up, uh, even though I was on an academic scholarship, I dropped out after uh, basically a semester and went to a different school. Um, part of that was because I was told that my degree was going to take me six years to finish. Um, and it wasn't my fault. It was because the program that I was going to be a guinea pig for was actually held up in delays. Uh, so they were going to have to, I wasn't going to be able to take any of the classes I needed to and I was supposed to just fill the time with a secondary uh, major. So I decided that's not going to work for me. I don't want to spend six years in school, especially uh, the field I was looking into at, at the time, which is video game development. That was literally, I mean, if anyone that knows anything about video games uh, and console life cycles knows six years is literally an entire console life cycle. Like I would miss an entire segment of the industry and it's just, it was going to be a disaster. So I came down here to go to Full Sail because they started their bachelor's program. Little did I know that six months into it, I was going to meet someone that was paranoid schizophrenic and give me a whole new perspective on mental illness. Uh, the girl that I dated for a long time, her mom had been diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenic, but, and she knew that there was a risk of her to have it as well. But as a result, all it, like, as she started to exhibit the signs, because she, uh, she was a little bit older than me. Um, she was, uh, when we, 
when we first met, she was 26. And right around like between 26 and 30 is when the symptoms start to show. So she was starting to get her symptoms, but we just thought it was typical relationship crap. So we'd go back and forth and we'd, we'd have these huge fights. And like, I remember one time I left to go to class and she, she got all upset with me and I came home and she had like broken my glasses in half because she was mad at me because she thought I was cheating. And it was all in her head. And it's like, so like I've seen those signs. And it was starting, to, you know, it, because I, she was going through her issues, they were much more serious. It helped, edit, what it actually did was it masked the issues I was going through at the same time. It masked my depression as more just relationship junk. So after that relationship ended, you know, things started to normalize. I met the person who I'd eventually marry and things still like, there's always this nagging feeling that something wasn't quite right. And it wasn't until about a year ago that I finally started getting help. I started going to see a therapist and they helped me understand not, o not only am I bipolar, which is why I was having these weird mood swings, but it's also helped me to come to, the, come to terms with the fact that I'm transgender. And that is a huge part of what I was dealing with. And especially now, um, the last few months, if you, when we were, at, we were at WordCamp Orlando, anyone that, that saw me could tell uh, there was something wrong with me. I was a, a, different in a way that I hadn't been even around this group who spent a lot of time with me. What I ended up realizing at the time was that I couldn't, because this was before my diagnosis of being bipolar, I, I just couldn't handle it anymore. The stress was too much um, because this was all around the time. If you remember, WordCamp Orlando happened, I think literally two days after the election. So as someone who has just recently been coming to terms with the fact that he's transgender and coming out the night of the election, dealing with a word camp two days later was, was crushing. My wife had kicked me out of the house because I'd came out because she was fine with, uh, with me being trans, but wasn't okay with me being public about it, which I completely understood. But as a result, I had to, I had to go away for a few days and try to figure out how we were going to handle this. And I was supposed to deal with the WordCamp at the same time. Long story short, I ended up that first night with, at the, uh, with the Bluehost guys, and I think all the organizers were there, Jeff was there, um, staring at my $50 steak and being sitting there thinking I want to kill myself. And it was because I couldn't go home, I missed my kid, and that's when my wife said, you can come home, but only if you go to a doctor and get medication because there's clearly something more going on here. And since then, I've gotten help. I've stayed uh, stuck with my therapist. We also saw a couples therapist for a long time. And even though now this has progressed into me getting divorced and going through a complicated legal situation, the last six weeks especially, once things have kind of normaled out for my medication, are the happiest I've been in 10 years. And it's because I made the point to get professional medical help. Because at some point, mental illness is not just you feel sad, that you need to, uh, I'll explain this in a second, that you need to just try to be happy. You, at some point, you need to go further. And that's one of the reasons why I got this tattoo. A, this is for the Miami audience. Um, the reason I have this, and the, it's, the location is very specific. I got this tattoo because it's a reference back to that song. It's a, it's a pink poppy flower for the character, but it's also on my wrist because it's where I would have cut my wrists if I, if I decided to go to kill, to kill myself. And so what I wanted was a permanent reminder of where I'd been and that I would survive. That every time I felt dark, I, all I would have to do is look down and re remember that I'm gonna be okay I'm gonna get through this. There are a lot of symptoms of depression, and if you know, if you read through this list, you'll notice a lot of them kind of contradict each other, uh, such as waking up too early, excessive sleepiness, insomnia, but or restless sleep, like just the sleep aspects of it. 
it's really hard to figure out, is it depression or are you just sad? Did you just not get enough sleep? But I highlighted the one in yellow. The cognitive ones are, to me, the most telling signs that you have a much more serious problem that needs to be dealt with with a professional. The inability to concentrate, general uh, lethargy, and thoughts of suicide. If you are truly thinking, and this is, this goes beyond the like, you're in a bad situation and you just kind of want to curl up and die. That's one thing. Thoughts of suicide are, you're in the kitchen cutting an apple and you figure, you keep looking at the knife and going, maybe I should just end it all right now. I've been there. It's not fun, obviously, but it's, it's a sign that you need professional help. And it's a sign that you don't need your friends telling you to just try to be happy. Spend more time outside. Just exercise more. Now, a runner's high is a real thing. Anyone that, do, that runs uh, on a regular basis, that's real. But it's, it, it's actually further proof that you need to be medicated. Because what the, the runner's high does is it replicates the effects of a lot of antipsychotic meds and a lot of antidepressant meds. Because all, it, all it's doing is increasing your, your brain's chemistry for that temporary period of time that's making you feel better. What those drugs do is they do that all the time, even when you're not running, even when you're sleeping. It helps you, it helps normalize out your brain chemistry. And that's why any advice you get from friends that's not a, that isn't an actual doctor or a therapist, at minimum take it with a huge grain of salt, but most times ignore it. Unless they've been through it. So if, they, if there's someone that, hey man, I've dealt with depression, you need to go see a doctor. If that's the advice, take it. So what to do? This get help. Talk to a doctor, whether it's a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I recommend seeing, uh, if, you're psych if you go to see like a therapist's office and they're tied to a medical practice like mine is, they can basically make recommendations to your, doc your primary care physician. And then their primary care physician, if they have the knowledge, will, will give you a prescription for whatever drugs they think are, are appropriate. But if you want to take this really seriously, go see a psychiatrist because they can, they are basically a therapist and a doctor at the same time. My personal experience with psychiatrists hasn't been all that great because they tend to be more on the doctor side than the therapist side. So they, they go to the, the standard medications instead of looking at your individual history. Um, but still the standards are really solid. I actually just had a, a, a session with my therapist this morning and right before that I saw my doctor and we talked about adding a medication just as a trial to see how much more effective it would be. The idea is it takes time. Um, most, most meds, it takes a minimum of three months to really get into your system and start normalizing you out. So you don't really, like you might feel a little bit better, but over time you're gonna increase your dosage. Sometimes you're gonna draw back your dosage if, it's, if the side effects aren't good for you. But the, the point is you need a doctor to guide you through that process. I, I know too many people, especially in the trans community, that will try to self-medicate through things they find on Reddit or, you know, articles they read online or holistic meds that are trying to replicate the, replicate the idea uh, and the effects of the meds without doctor supervision. And as a result, they completely throw everything off and it actually makes it worse. So that's why having a doctor to guide you is so incredibly important. These are a few of the resources um, that you'll want to consider if you're if you are struggling. Um, this first one, the text line, is a it's just you text connect to that number seven four one seven four one, and you'll get to talk to a there's someone on the other line that will just talk to you because some some nights that's all you need is like hey I'm really feeling down I just need to talk to someone. Uh, the same for the, the two phone numbers. The first number is just a general talk line for depression and other, other issues, whereas the number below it, they're run by the same group, but the, the, the second number is specifically a suicide hotline, and it is meant for people that are genuinely thinking about killing themselves, and they need someone to talk to, basically to convince them not to. Sometimes that's all you need, is you just want someone to tell you, no, your life is worth living, please keep pushing on, that's the line you call. Um, you can find more information at spsamerica.org. Um, that's the suicide prevention 
uh, charity. And because this was for Miami, uh, Miami does have a local suicide prevention line as well. Um, I'm, n I'm sh pretty sure Orlando does. I just don't, I didn't have time to update the slides. And with that, questions? So how far are you into your treatment? Uh, it's been four months now on meds. How do you feel? Great. Especially the last six weeks, which the last six weeks have been the most trying time. That's how I know the meds are really working. Um, six weeks ago is when I was like the divorce process really ramped up and I'm now out of my house. Like I live in a, I live in a room that's like the size of this kitchen, like it, it, at my mom's place, because that's all I've got right now. But oddly I'm happy because I know I get to be myself. I'm the meds have been in my system for long enough that they're being, they're very effective. And I know that I've got a future. That's a huge part of it as well. It's like that and reminding myself every day that it's it's gonna get better. That's why like back, what was it, five, six, seven years ago now, the It's Get Better, It, it, it Gets Better videos started popping up on YouTube. Those are so incredibly important because it's just being, and not just for people that are LGBT. It's a constant reminder that, yeah, life sucks today, but tomorrow could be different. And is that, is that the cure-all? Absolutely not. If you've got it, because I know now, being having been diagnosed as bipolar and knowing that I have a, um, a serotonin deficiency in my brain, no amount of just therapy was ever going to fix that. And so getting on meds was the thing that saved my life. Fortunately, not much. Um, the one project that I was I was heavily involved in, um, which actually just launched a few weeks ago, was the a complete overhaul of the one of the outlet stores, uh, their website. And because I was very open with them about what I was dealing with, even um, as the divorce process started, they understood like if you need to take a day, take a day, because at at the end of it. Our website, we know it's going to get done. We know you're committed. You know, if they, if they had maybe gotten concerned that I was going to be, I was going to abandon the project, then maybe it would have been different. But otherwise, they were super supportive. I had other, like, even when I had to tell clients uh, just recently, like, I've got a new phone number. I've, you know, I have to change my address. So if you have to mail me anything, like a couple of clients that mail me checks, make sure you bail them to this new address. They were all very supportive, like, Anything you need, if you need a break, or if you just need someone to talk to, give us a call. Like, clients have been very supportive. And that's why I'm a huge proponent in the, when you're talking to your clients, just tell them what you're going, what's going on in your life, especially if you're like a solo business owner like I am, because they understand that people go through, you know, life happens. And if you get a client that doesn't understand that, you don't want them as a client. So, and if you are, if the, for the people in this room that are just clients, remember that, that we are people first, that we go through things every day and every single day, someone is fighting a battle you know nothing about. And there may be nothing you can do to help other than just being nice. I mean, just an example from, from my life today, uh, I went to lunch today, just ran through the drive through at McDonald's. And instead of being called sir, I was called hun, which meant the world to me because I, was pre I, I wasn't in a dress at the time. I was just in jeans and a t-shirt, but because I had makeup on, it was a very clear, because every day, I mean, earlier when I was at, at my doctor's office, a guy in the elevator was like, hey man, how's it going? Which I don't really care because I, I actually identify as non-binary, which means I'm kind of in the middle. I use all, I use, I still use my male pronouns. I haven't changed my name. I don't plan on it yet for people that aren't and that are in transition, but just ha don't have the resources to go through, go through like laser hair removal and stuff like that. Gendering someone properly, the way they're presenting means the world to them. There, there's transgender people are some of the most at risk for suicide. 42% of people that have that deal with gender dysphoria and don't act on it, don't just attempt suicide, but finish it. 42%.
So it it's kind of a down note to, to end on, but just think about that. Um, and if you are ever going through anything, I am a resource for you. In this community, you can get me, reach me on Twitter, both at my personal Twitter and my company Twitter. Both of my websites have contact forms. And if you want, um, I've got a few of my cards that have my personal cell phone number on it. If you need help, if you just need someone to talk to, I am here for you. Any other questions? Uh, there's been a lot more uh, focus put lately on folks, especially in the tech community, mainly people who work from home on uh, mental health issues. Um, do you have anything in particular that has helped you, maybe, I don't want to say get perspective, but you know, have, working from home mm -hmm. is kind of tough sometimes when you're working alone all day. Yeah. Um, the biggest the biggest lesson I've learned as far as how to deal with working from home and dealing with mental illness is I make a point even though it's not always financially the best decision is I go to lunch every day because it means that I get out of the house and I'm around people. Just being around people can be can make a huge difference. It's not gonna it's not gonna solve your problems, but it's gonna help. That, that's an it's an important point to consider the idea that if you're in a some it helps you stay away stay out of that like really dark everything sucks nobody wants to no i mean i hell I, I i dealt with it a little bit yesterday because we were around each other and like when you're with your friends for an entire weekend and then the next day you're all by yourself in a, a tiny room it's really depressing so going out and going and having lunch at chipotle cheered me up a little bit and made me realize i could get through the day like it's it's little things but you kind of piece them together and you get through it. Any other questions? Yes? Who was your biggest supporter throughout the process and, and why did you keep supported by them? Um, my biggest supporter, to be perfectly honest, is also the tallest, and that's this guy right here, uh, Jeff. Uh... Um, Jeff and I have worked together for a couple of years. Uh, we, we worked at the same agency for two years, and he was kind of my mentor there. And we, even though we both left the company that we worked for, uh, it's been, it's been what, a year and a half now since I left. Um, we've always stayed in touch. We hang out on, on a regular basis. And I know that he's someone I can call if I really need to. Um, same with David and Lisa and Chris. Like Everyone in this community, uh, the WordPress community, has been absolutely incredibly supportive. Um, there's people that live in Tampa that I don't see, except at WordCamps, that at WordCamp Orlando, um, Norcross basically hung out with me all weekend because he could tell I wasn't right and he wanted to make sure that I was okay And he was one of the people that made sure like he brought people to my talk in Miami the other day Specifically because he wanted to show support. So it's you know The WordPress community that's one of the great things about it is just how supportive we are of each other And that's why like if you need someone to, someone to talk to I'm here Yeah. Not saying something specific, but just being with exactly. You. Just knowing that I have someone to talk to. Um, I have some other friends from high school and stuff like that I, that I still reach out to. But you know, it's it's the importance of even if you are an introvert and you don't mind being alone most days. And it's, it's kind of like it's kind of how I am. I'm nine days out of ten, I love being by myself. But that tenth day. I'm a 13-year-old girl crying in her bedroom, wishing, thinking everybody hates me. And that's where I was last night. So, like, we all, we all go through it, and it's having friends and having people to talk to. That even, if that even if that person to talk to is Twitter, if you are able to interact with people on Twitter, like, it makes the world a world of difference. I, I, I know a, tra a, a friend I have on Twitter that yesterday was misgendered, like, five times within the space of two hours, and she was just despondent but me reaching out to her I know made her day better because I was like no matter what anyone says I still think you're gorgeous and that's all that matters so yes as like things that uh, that you didn't think people should say you know like oh just go exercise mm -hmm. um, a lot of people similar to your question I think a lot of people uh, want to be supportive but maybe Yes. The best way to approach someone is make it clear that it's coming from a place of love and say, I can tell that you're not okay. I'm not judging you, but I want to help. 
coming from it, coming from that point of view, it's different than like just saying, "Are you okay?" Because that person that goes, "Are you okay?" There's kind of a tone there, like there's something wrong with you, and I'm noticing, and I'm gonna point it out to everyone. But pulling someone aside privately, it changes everything, and it's 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 how it's the tone of voice. It's how much compassion you show to a person that gets them to understand, like, oh, they really do care. Like that's how, like that's how I knew um, during WordCamp Orlando. Like Norcross just just stood there with me. It was like, oh, hey, do you want to do this? It was his tone of voice was very clear that I'm gonna hang out with you because I know you're going through some stuff. So it's not not being overt about it, but showing that like you want you showing that you care in a way that isn't look at me i'm the person that cares uh there's a uh, a stand-up comedian he does a, a bit about how he makes jokes uh, um during tragedies you know so like the boston marathon bombing and things like that it's it's comes off really cruel but he's got a really good point which is the people he's making fun of are not the victims the people he's making fun of are the people that run onto social media and say my thoughts and prayers everybody don't forget that i'm the one i'm sad this terrible thing happened but don't forget about me so if you if you come off as are you okay it has a tendency to come off as it's not really about the person you're asking about but hey look at how wonderful i am trying to help you the people that that do it quietly are the ones that really care so any other questions do you have an maybe new dreams, new goal? Uh, yeah. Um, goal is to keep getting regular work right now. <laughs> that it's uh, it's really it's it's to to get out of get out of my parents' house. I'm I'm 32. I don't need to be living with my mom. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it's you know things are things are pretty good. That's a good goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I guess we'll take a break now, and then uh, Lisa will be up in a little bit. Go get the swags. <laughs>